Hi everyone, it's Laura here and in today's video I'm going to share with you how to create a watercolor card using the old and new wavy roses stamp set and the Tropico Fiesta markers. Before diving in the tutorial, I wanted to show you some of the products from the latest old and new release. This was released in August 2019 and it's really gorgeous. I have a few products here, but check the links in the description box down below to have a look at the entire release. This stamp set here is called Wavy Roses and as you can see it is pretty large and it has this very doodly type of designs. The set comes with a coordinating stencil that you can use to do masking or ink blending and also with coordinating dies. Then we have the dot art stamp set. This is really cool I think and quite innovative with these graphic designs and I have a card with this stamp set on my blog where there is a blog hop with giveaways too. So again make sure to check all the links in the description box down below. And lastly, I wanted to show you this beautiful Just Because Builder with a lot of different style sentiments to build your Just Because cards. Coming back to the card, I started by stamping the images in the Wavy Roses stamp set on some Canson Excel watercolor cardstock. I'm using my Mini Misty because this allows me to be able to stamp in the same position multiple times with uh, great precision so that I am sure that I get a nice and crisp impression every single time. Once I was done stamping, and that by the way was VersaFine Onyx Black Ink, I heat embossed the images with clear embossing powder because this will speed up the coloring process a little bit. Basically, the embossed lines are raised a little bit with respect to the surface of the paper. So when you go and add your pigments and your water, you are sure that they will stay confined in those areas and there will be no bleeding. For my coloring today, I decided to use my watercolor markers by Otenu. This is the Tropical Fiesta set and these markers are really fun to use. They are really pigmented and the flow is great. And also these are light fast so they will not fade on you, which is a great feature I believe. I'm using a water brush to blend out my markers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my watercolor marker first. The color here is purple wine. I'm going to lay it down in a very thin area at the base of the petals or where I have the roses overlapping for example and then I'm going to blend that out with the water brush which is filled with water. You really need just very little pigment because as I said these markers are very pigmented and they move very easily so in order to preserve your highlights it's better to be a little bit conservative with the amount of marker you put down. And the water brush here is also by Otenu. It is included in the set of watercolors, the 36 half pans that are available for purchase on the Otenu stores, but it's also available for purchase individually. And I have to say that I have struggled a little bit with water brushes in the past. They are very convenient because they make the water coloring process much, much faster. But with some of them, I have found it hard to control the flow of the water. But I have to say that with this one, I didn't encounter any problems at all. And on the contrary, I really enjoy using it on my watercolor pieces. I sped up the coloring process for the second rows a little bit and I'm going to just fill in all the petals with this purple wine watercolor marker. I have colored quite a few flowers today but I'm going to show you the coloring just for these ones here and for the leaves because the process is the same. In order to add a little bit more color variation, I decided to come in with a second layer of color, this time using a different watercolor marker. This one here is called Fresh Lemon and as I did before, I'm going to add it at the base of the petals and then blend it out. As you saw, I scribbled the marker on my glass mat and then I picked up the pigment and added it to my petals because I felt that I had a little bit more control like that. 
And then I moved on to color the leaves, for which I used two different shades of green. I started with one coat of lime and then I went over that with one coat of sweet leaf and adding multiple colors to your watercolor pieces makes them more interesting and adds variation to them. Here you can see the other flowers and leaves that I colored and I also went ahead and die cut them with the coordinating dies. And then at this point I could move on and start working on my card base. I have some more watercolor cardstock by Canson in my Misty. This will be eventually cut down to 4 by 5 and a quarter inches. And I'm going to stamp my sentiment from the Just Because Builder stamp set. I did again some heat embossing with clear embossing powder to add some shine and interest to the sentiment. And as you can see, I picked this nice and scripty font. I adhered the panel on some black cardstock cut at an A2 size, so 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half inches. I'm using my Nuvo Deluxe adhesive and making sure that the panels are centered with respect to each other. And then I'm going to add some droplets to the background because I think they add always a lot of interest and movement to backgrounds that are empty otherwise. For that, I used the black paint in the watercolor set by Alta New. I diluted it with some water and mixed it in with my Spectrum Noir clear overlay pen because that will add a little bit of shimmer to the black watercolor. And then I created some very light blue droplets with my turquoise marker, also from the Tropical Fiesta set, which I diluted with some water before picking it up with a paintbrush and creating these droplets again. I dried everything with my heat gun and then I decided to add some wavy lines with a fine liner. This is a black fine liner by Faber-Castell and I like to use it to create some additional interest with elements like this or with stitched lines around my panels. You must have seen me do it a little bit lately because I've been quite obsessed with adding this type of personal touches to cards. At this point all my elements were ready and I could go ahead and start adhering all the flowers and the leaves on my card front. I'm using liquid glue and you saw I was holding all the die cut pieces in a little bowl that I have on my desk. I find that this is a good way to keep everything tidy and make sure that I'm not going to lose all those die cut pieces in my craft room somewhere. At this point I felt that the center was a little bit empty with respect to the rest of the card where I have all those flowers and leaves. Yes, I'm not really a clean and simple kind of creative person, but I think I want to learn how to make those because I think they can be really beautiful and impactful. But that's for another day and today I'm going to add some Nuvo Drops in Ebony Black to my card front and that finished off my card. And here is the final result. As I said, this card is part of a blog hop to celebrate the latest autumn new release. There are giveaways too, so make sure to check all the links in the description box down below. If you did enjoy this video, please let me know with a comment and give it a thumbs up. And if you found it useful, you can share it with your friends, they might find it useful too. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to my channel for more inspiration. And as always, thank you very much for stopping by and have a great day.